One year ago, 12 students arrived in Stratford, Ontario to begin the grueling two-year program at an internationally recognized culinary academy. Raw, hungry, and even desperate, they knew from the very beginning that not all of them would make it. As of right now, I'm not coming back. Now, back for their second and final year, they'll be stretched beyond their imaginations to find out if they have what it takes. This is the story of nine of them. This is your time to shine, you're gonna be just fine. It's your time and I am. Look how far you come, open your eyes. This is your time tonight, it turned out all right. You don't have to fight a night. Look how far you come, open your eyes. Look how far you come, open your eyes. Last year, at Chef School. This uniform represents everything that I've worked towards for the last two years. Ben, this pork is drastically overcooked. Ben has a definite competitive streak. I am insanely angry. My honest impression is that Kelsey's a little fickle. I would have to say I'm definitely flirtatious. This is the Fergania. My mom has just been diagnosed with cancer. A year ago was my last day that I drank and used alcohol and drugs. I'm not going to eat the undercooked salmon. My addiction is very much alive in me. Andrew, you got 67%, and that, uh, that is a fail today. There's still a little lingering doubt every once in a while that makes me think, oh, crap. Yeah. maybe I should go back to academia. Fuck! Are you fucking high? Honestly, what the hell is wrong with you? I had my guidance counselor tell me I would never amount to anything. I don't agree with you when you say this isn't burnt. This is burnt. Like, how can you not be scared shitless? I'm fucked. I know I should not drink at this point. You'd be willing to uh, to stop while you're at chef school? Uh, just cut down. Your final grade is almost 82%. Unless I want to end up being someone's sous chef for the next 10 years, 82% isn't good enough. I thoroughly understand these dishes. I don't understand you. So next year, I just want to actually be getting better right from the start. I'm resisting. Success. I now know how much I don't know. Just do better next time, you fucking idiot. I'm so ready for school again. It's happening all over again. You get to do it again. That's crazy to go to this school. I'll have to admit that there was a few times that I played with the idea of not coming back. You gotta really want something out of it to come here and make it through successfully. All summer, I worked at a gastro pub in Guelph. I had a weird, weird, messed up summer. I was in pastry for the majority of the summer. So I was pastry and lunch cook once that lunch started. Stay. Watch me. No, no, stop you. I spent two months juicing tomatoes uh, and roasting eggplants. I proved that I can handle it. I got paid $701 every two weeks. Well, goodbye, Mother Dearest. Goodbye, sweetheart. I love you. Oh, jeez. Be good. No, I, I worked in a restaurant all summer learning French food. I got yelled at a lot. French food, French food, French food, French food, French food. Joyce, how are you? Good to see you. I started on pastry. A ton of shopping. So I was doing bread. Pans, grills, salads. When you come home at the end of the day and you're tired and you're, you're, you're depressed. My ego took a huge beating. I'm a stupid girl in the kitchen, man. And then you think, did I make the wrong choice? I sliced my thumb from here to here. Like, my hands are fucked up. I went a quarter of the way through my bone. My hands are just healing. My finger, like, they were twice the size and just looked like I was an 80-year-old man. Finally getting a little better. <laughs> It is an achievement to be back. I had nightmares. I had nightmares about coming back here. No, I made it through first year. That was hell. This year, like, it's really more about actually surviving it. My resolution is to do 100 times better than last year and push myself as, as far as I can mentally and emotionally take it. The bottom line is not everyone's going to make it. I want to find out what I got. I expect to see at least one person snap. I don't think we're ever going to be the same after this.
No. Get up. This year, I'm choosing to stay at home, be closer to my family. Good morning. My wife has decided to go on with her studies, but she needs to be in Toronto. Yeah. Okay. So I'm needed at home to be with the kids. He's commuting from London to Stratford, which is a 40-minute drive, so he's going to be doing that twice a day, often in the winter when there are snowstorms. Do I think it's going to be easy? Absolutely not. Holding you on jam or no? Chef school is hard for me. I, I live, you know, 10 minutes away from the school. I have no responsibilities on my head, and it's hard for me. Richard's going to spend a lot of time commuting this year, when he should be spending a lot of time doing homework. So I'm really worried about how he's going to get everything done. What's it now? Hmm? Probably my biggest challenge right now is is my my son and his, his schoolwork. People, places, or things. It's not coming to him naturally. Write the words that are proper nouns. Ow. It reminds me so much of myself. If I had to choose between chef school and my kids, uh, without a doubt, 100%, my children. This year, the school program is completely different. In first year, we try to gain our basic cooking skills. Hello, Joyce. <laughs> Just how to handle ourselves in the kitchen. Second year is all about working with our peers in a group to put on actual dinners for paying customers. Hello, Andrew. One of us is always going to be the head chef. Richard. And the rest of the group do the various jobs. If nobody likes you, Nobody's going to work hard when you're the head chef. I'm going to find it really frustrating. People have to w bust their ass for you. They have to want to do that. I'm just going to be losing on people. Hello, Probably. everyone. Welcome back to your two of the Stratford Chef School. I'll probably have some trouble taking orders. If people don't want to work hard to please you, I can kind of get a little hostile. Then you're not going to succeed as head chef. And you're going to fail. Our numbers are a little bit diminished from last year. One person, as you know, didn't graduate from the first year of the program, which was too bad. And then two students have transferred out of this group. This is a suitable beginning to just looking a little bit at what's going to happen this year. We've always said about the Stratford Chef School that it's where the best chefs train. I felt kind of ripped off with some of my marks last year. And I, I think the second year of the curriculum can be quite challenging. But this year, I'm going to try to prove them wrong. I predict that Dave Lingard will not have changed one bit. Dave's just going to be himself. He'll still think that he knows everything. Thinking he runs the world. I think Dave's going to have trouble this year. Oh, Dave. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> Has anything changed about me? No. Here's to success this year. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Hmm. Andrew Korstein. <laughs> I've missed him. <laughs> Andrew didn't work in a kitchen this summer. Oh, Korstein. I don't know that he's ever really worked in a restaurant. The last I heard through the grapevine, Andrew Korstein is doing academic work at the university for very good money. This summer, I had an apprenticeship lined up with a chef that I loved. It was the dream job. Unfortunately, the chef quit a week before I was supposed to start, and of course, my apprenticeship disappeared. Unlike everybody else who's here, I haven't actually worked in a kitchen all summer. I think we've all been tested this summer in whatever we've done, except for Andrew, maybe. <laughs> we all know what Andrew's limitations are right now. He's been torturing rats in a laboratory for eight months. <laughs> it was actually a difficult decision to, uh, to come back, but I mean, deep down, I love to cook, so it makes sense for me to be here. The big problem that we're all going to face this year is that we are all interdependent on each other when we're in that kitchen. If one person doesn't perform, it affects another person's grade. I love Andrew to death, and it's nothing against Andrew at all. It's just, ooh. I mean, realistically, I have to admit, I'm going to have difficulty. I mean, I don't want my inexperience to bring other people down. It's the first day back, the first time going to class. And it's ethnic class. It's going to be really fun. It all seems strangely deja vu-ish. It feels like I never left, in a sense. No moment solidifies the fact that, yeah, I'm going back to chef school more than, than right now. Mr. Korstein is in a whole heap of trouble. I mean, really, this is, this is the point of no return. He's fucked. <laughs> Had my doubts, but now the decision's been made. I step into that kitchen. I'm back at chef school. Second year students, I'd like to welcome you to your ethnic class. Today's class is filled pastas. 
Filled pastas. A century ago, stuffed pastas with vegetable-based fillings were eaten on Fridays and in Lent by the well-off. And eaten year-round by those too poor to buy meat. When the Bolognese eat their famous tortellini and brodo, they never speak a word until the dish is finished. And then only to utter a gentle murmur of appreciation. I'd like to welcome you back to the Stratford Chef School. This year we're going to be learning a lot more about cuisines from around the world. I hope you had a good summer. I hope you learned lots. I'd like to discover the unknown. What was the most important thing over the summer that you learned, Alex? This is why we're all here, right? To learn how to cook and to be with Baxter. I am, anyways. Communication, working on communication with fellow co-workers. And Joyce, what did you learn over the summer? Chef Baxter is going around the room asking us what we learned all summer. I was trying to work on my speed. Right on. I was forced to work on my speed. Right. I mean, what else can you learn? Tim, so what was the most important thing that you learned over the summer? People are talking about my knife skills are fantastic. And you think your knife skills improved over the summer? Yeah, and he gets to me. And Andrew, what did you learn this summer? <laughs> Um... <laughs> um... And silence. Dead silence. I wanted that to happen. <laughs> I have to admit, I'm, uh, I'm at a bit of a, a loss for words. I'm usually pretty good about getting an answer out fairly quickly. So even a five second pause, that, that can seem like an eternity. Um, we're all snickering. Hey, what did you learn? <laughs> um, let's see. You never know where you're going to end up in the end. In the end, it's true. I didn't know whether I was going to be back, and now I am. Right. Andrew, come on, man. You could have pulled something out of your ass better than that. I'm working with Dave today, and we're making lobster ravioli. Dave, we'll get a sure. pot of water on. It's a bit of a mixed blessing. Putting the guy who hasn't worked in a restaurant all summer and one who thinks he knows everything together. <laughs> this is really not something I'm looking forward to. What's that for? David. <laughs> What's that for? I was gonna boil some water in here. Throw the claws and the tail in here. <laughs> David. Is that okay? Poor Andrew. <laughs> Poor Dave. <laughs> My first task is to kill the lobster. I have to hold it down, take a big chef's knife, and just stab the lobster right behind the eyes. Cut through and pull down. Pull down. Basically killing it as quickly as possible. Sorry, buddy. That doesn't happen, though. After you jab the knife in this lobster's head, it, it doesn't seem happy about having this big, jagged blade. Twist off the tail. And but uh, it's kind of cool killing my first lobster like that. I mean, it's a cool start to the day. It's a cool start to the year. Good. Um, Dave, I'm just going to put the lobster water back here to start to reduce. It's kind of hard to cook today, just before class. I got a phone call from my brother saying that our aunt has passed away. Um, it's kind of rough. She's only 35. She died of breast cancer. Is this clean? Did you use this? I, I just rinsed it off. I'm sitting here in class trying to make pasta, and. All I can think about is my aunt, but school still has to come first. What do you think, David? Not sure yet. You know, I, I have to pass school. I have to do a good job. This is good. A bit more salt. Yeah. It could have a little more, but I uh, would be happy with that. Although I'm working with Andrew today, I, I don't really feel that it's any of his business. You know, it's private life, and it can be left out of the kitchen. Today, I'm doing filled agnolotti with Kelsey. We're doing a roast beetroot onion agnolotti. I have to wait till it cools down and then get all the excess water out of it so it doesn't make the pasta soggy. I can see that all the students have matured throughout the summer. They seem more confident, more relaxed. Christmas hands. Just in time for Halloween. <laughs> Man, Kelsey's a wonderful girl. Hey, Kelsey, would you like me to fill your dough? You can say things to her. I'd love it if you felt my dough, Chef. She welcomes it in a way. <laughs> Richard, Alex, and I are making uh, capoletti filled with spinach, ricotta, and pancetta. In Joyce, I see a little more confidence. I don't see a huge amount of confidence. 
I did some filled pasta this summer. With some people, it's easier for them to be comfortable. I've just learned from, you know, this summer, I have a lot of confidence in myself. I've really grown. And for Joyce, I think it will come. It will just need a little more work. OK, guys, I need all your fillings assembled and in the middle of the table. When I think of filled pasta, it's mostly just raviolis and Chef Boyardee. I used to love that shit. Mm. I'd like to demonstrate the yeah. shapes for you. I don't know which pass is which. I don't know what shapes. Is it tortellini? What's a capoletti? OK. Agnolotti, then. I, I've never even heard of an agnolotti. This is the shape that you want for the, the agnolotti. OK. The shape of the pasta is designed to cling the type of sauce it's served with. So if we start with a circle, that means tortellini. It's fucking exceptional. Fold them in half and then fold them back on themselves. Making passes, just getting right in there, it's almost sexual. What it's supposed to resemble is a woman's, a woman's navel. <laughs> Chef Baxter. I love him. <laughs> I still feel that it's a privilege to work in his kitchen. As Richard and I were making the filling, I was like tasting it and I just felt like it needed an acid flavor. Salt. Hmm. So I decided that some lemon zest would be a good addition. Changing the recipe, I never would have done that last year. Because like last year, I was all like, oh my god, it's such an insult. Ah, I don't want to insult Baxter. Hot, hot, clear. The students at this point should have learned certain skills in first year, and they should have grown throughout the, the summer. And I should expect a certain amount of skill. Now, the only problem with you scooping them out onto the pot, you're going to have them full of, full of water. Clearly, Andrew hadn't spent any time in the kitchen this summer. You're breaking my heart. Oh, jeez. Slide I'm them sorry. back into the bowl. Slide them back into the water. It's a shit show. This goes back to basics, all right? Sorry. So if you scoop out one at a time, you're probably going to have a quarter cup of water left in here, right? There's a pool. And when you put the sauce on, there's going to be a big separation. Put them into the sauce, and then from the sauce into the bowl. <sighs> yeah. I never expect any of us to make anything bad anymore this year. Hey, don't make it too fussy. Yeah. <laughs> good. You know, everything should be good. Good. Ben and Kelsey, why don't we try this now and see what we think? They're really good. A little sour, Dave. The beets are like really earthy and sweet. And the onions add some sweetness, but they're also kind of savory. Just a little more, a little more salt in the water, right? When you cook the pasta, that's all. So well done. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Lobster ravioli. The criteria here, the pasta should be tender. The filling should should ooze out. Filled pasta, it's actually something very down home. It's comfort food, you know? It's something very wholesome. I love pasta. And then you fill it, and it's like a surprise. I think what you've got here, Andrew and David, is, is good. The pasta is nice and tender. And they're pretty. <laughs> so I think you've done a good job. Chef Baxter was pleased with my pasta today, but it doesn't mean I'm going to have a good year. OK, bring over your plate, please, Alex. Baxter is trying my pasta, and I didn't think I put in enough lemons to be noticeable. I just wanted to kind of lift it a little bit. It has a slightly citrus flavor to it. Is there a lemon in here? And I was like, uh, that's me. Joyce didn't even tell me she did that. Did you put some lemon juice in here? And it's insane that Neil actually picked that out. Uh, it was lemon zest. Chef. Lemon zest? I was kind of shitting my pants. And why did you do that? I don't know. He's so, like, straight-faced. You never really know what he's going to say until he says it. It's funny, but it works. It's, uh, it's good. Oh, yeah. Good. It says that also Joyce has a good taste for flavor combinations. <laughs> Her palate can put things together well. This is like a big step for me because I feel like I'm putting more of myself into the food. <laughs> OK, let's, let's try these then. It's exciting when they choose to do something like that because then they're starting to think for themselves. Last year, I was just really too scared to do anything without somebody okaying it first. My feelings overall is that you that you all did a very good job. And I feel like that's gone now. She's doing what we should all be doing and just learning from it. The goals that we were after with the pasta were soft, tender, flavorful, nicely cooked, 
and I think that you managed to achieve that. It's really different than last year. Just to think back to a year from now, how you worked then and how you work now, it's phenomenal. It's like back then you were just a, a, a caterpillar crawling around all over the place, and now you're just the moth, you know, you've sort of grown up. <laughs> Leave it to Chef Baxter to give a half compliment. <laughs> Caterpillar into a moth. It's so nice to see, you know, what happens between first and second years. Why not a beautiful butterfly? <laughs> We're not that beautiful yet. Good, thanks very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Next time on Chef School. I got an email two weeks before school started saying, this is your lab package. Ooh, you're up. Good God. And good luck. Oh, I definitely would not want to be Kelsey. A lab is a dinner put on for the actual public by the students. And Kelsey's the head chef. Your job is to think about what are all the possible things that could go wrong with this menu. I know what Eleanor or Jim will be taking off in their mind. Does this have good flavor, texture, color, sheen? They're going to rip it apart. Mine's covered in fat, cold bowl. God damn you guys. Uh, uh,